tonight's ESPN3 college football presentation. Tonight, it's the visiting Holy Cross Crusaders and the Harvard University Crimson. Alongside my broadcast partner, Eric Steckling, I'm Scott Sudikoff. Glad you could join us on this Friday evening on ESPN3. Holy Cross comes in at 2-1 on the season. Meanwhile, Harvard opening up its 2014 campaign here tonight. And for Holy Cross, they're looking for some revenge from last year's triple overtime defeat out in Worcester. Yeah, crazy game out at Fitton Field. Harvard needed a score in the last minute just to tie it up. Ended up only losing one game the whole season. You know, this team really had the staying power to finish games like that this year. Something they're looking to duplicate this year. On the Holy Cross side, the player to look at is the quarterback, Peter Pugals. He's not just a passer, though. He has great legs. Yeah, Puyol's coming off a career-high rushing effort against Central Connecticut State. He burned the Crimson for four touchdowns through the air last year. Watch for him to be a big dual threat factor. And on the Harvard side, we look at their quarterback as well, a returning starter, a senior, Connor Hempel. He leads the charge for this Crimson team. Yeah, and he was very efficient last year, completed two-thirds of his passes. It was Harvard's most efficient year under center. Look for him to continue to make smart decisions. So again, Harvard opening up its 2014 season tonight. Holy Cross coming in 2-1 and one on the year. And if tonight's game is anything like last year, we're definitely in for a good one. Kickoff coming up next on ESPN3. Welcome back to Harvard Stadium. Holy Cross and Harvard getting set to kick things off here. Alongside Eric Steckling, I'm Scott Sudikoff. Glad you could join us on ESPN3 this evening. You see the records, Holy Cross coming in at 2-1 and one on the season. Last week, they knocked off Central Connecticut 20-7. to seven. They've won two in a row. And meanwhile, Harvard beginning its 2014 season tonight, looking for another Ivy League championship, co-Ivy League champions a year ago with Princeton. Yeah, they shared it with the Tigers. They come into the season, pick second in the Ivy League, but just one point behind Princeton. And, you know, Coach Murphy talked in the offseason, there's really six teams if they stay healthy and if they really play their game that can win this league this year. But we're already seeing injuries, possibly a problem for Harvard tonight. Yeah, Harvard, as announced, will not be with, will be without I should say, Paul Stanton, their leading running back from last year, as well as their leading returning receiver, uh, Ricky Zorn. So no Stanton, no Zorn tonight for Harvard. Holy Cross does have one injury to speak of. Cornerback Steven Martinez will not suit up for the Crusaders in the road whites today. Yeah, the Crusaders you mentioned, you know, Coach Murphy also talked about it. It's a disadvantage. You're a team that's playing your first game against a team that's playing their fourth game. They've obviously had some weeks to prepare for this. Harvard also with a very young secondary. They lost a lot of key pieces to graduation. The good news is Norman Hayes is back there. He's the captain of this team. He's the anchor back there. It'll be interesting to see how the Harvard defense reacts and then how the offense adjusts to losing some of these weapons tonight. Holy Cross will be receiving to begin tonight's game. The Crusaders have played one game on the road so far. It was a 14-13 loss against Albany. Very tough loss for the Crusaders, a game in which they had a 13-0 lead in. Yeah, and what lost them that game and what has been an issue for Holy Cross this season is turnovers. Six fumbles in three games for the Crusaders. A fumble actually ended up leading to that winning touchdown for the Great Danes in week one. So Holy Cross has to take care of the football, especially playing in front of this charged up crowd. You know, it's the home opener, the season opener, and this fan base is ready. Drew Flesher getting set to kick off for Harvard. Khalif Raymond and Jake Wyzorek back deep for the Holy Cross Crusaders. And the 2014 season underway at Harvard Stadium for the Crimson. Taken by... And it was not Raymond actually back there for Holy Cross as they threw Aleem Muhammad back on the return. So he brings it up for Holy Cross, and now the Crusaders will begin their first offensive possession at the 17-yard line as we see quarterback Peter Pujols come out with the Crusader offense. Yeah, Pujols, we mentioned in our pregame, is a dual-threat quarterback, comes off a career-high rushing day against Central Connecticut. Harvard's got to watch both phases of the game here. See the defensive starters for the Crimson. Zach Hodges, the Ivy League Defensive Player of the Year. In 2013, as Pugliols with the read option right up the middle to Shane Taylor, the starting running back for the Crusaders. 
Couple of touchdowns on the year, 126 yards rushing for Taylor. Got a couple of yards there. Brings up a second and seven at the 20-yard line. Pugliaz again will hand it off and nowhere to go. Stuffed up at the 20-yard line. It'll bring up a third down and long situation. Yeah, again, right up the middle. This Harvard defense was exceptional against the run last year. Where they were weak was in the air, and that's what Holy Cross has to do. Interesting to see kind of the game plan from the Crusaders here early on. The number of pass attempts that Pugliels has attempted the last three weeks has dropped every week. Harvard was sixth of the nation rushing defense a year ago. Third down and seven from the 20. Taylor in the backfield with Pujols. Pujols trying to step up, but taken down at the 15-yard line by guess who? Zach Hodges. Another sack to his credit. Came into tonight fifth in school history with 18 and a half sacks. And I think he gets a full one right there. A full one, too, would lift him all the way up to second, as you see. Hodges coming in, even gets a hand on him, falling down to the ground, just the, the brute power of him there to take him down. Will McGrail with the punt for Holy Cross. Comes down inside the 50-yard line. Taken by Bryce Walker, and the Crimson will have pretty good starting field position for their first offensive drive of 2014 as Connor Hempel leads the Crimson out onto the field, the senior from Union, Kentucky, an All-Ivy League honorable mention in 2013. And he's no slouch in the running game either. Second leading rusher on the team last year with 259 yards. He has Andrew Caston in the backfield with him. As mentioned, Paul Stanton out for the game tonight, as is Ricky Storm. And Hempel is able to find the open receiver, Andrew Fisher, gets down to the 30-yard line, so a big 17-yard play to begin things for the Crimson. Great protection by the offensive line. Plenty of time for Hempel. We saw this a lot last year. Just very patient, very deliberate, found the wide-open receiver. Fisher had 24 catches a year ago, which was tied for third for Harvard. First down and 10 play from the Holy Cross 30. Quick screen to Fisher with room to roam. It'll be dragged out of bounds inside the 15 yard line. Chasing him out of bounds was Diego Quintanar. Now back to back first downs for Harvard. Yeah, and Fisher taking advantage. Look at the yards he racked up after the catch here. Big stiff arm to gain the few extra five, 10 yards. Maybe a little high there. Got to be careful with that one, but strong play again. So a first down play now from the Holy Cross 14. Bryce Walker, the man in motion, taking the handoff. And he's spun down at the eight yard line. Tackled by Chase Ullman, who got the start at outside linebacker tonight for Holy Cross. Second and four now from the eight yard line. Cast into the right of Hempel. And a quick slant in and out of the hands of Saitu Smith. Yeah, Smith's body unfortunately taking him the other way there for Harvard. Had to dive back and catch the ball on the near side of his body, just out of position for that one. Crimson were second in the Ivy League last year, 37.1 points per game. And now we'll have their first third down opportunity of the season. They converted at a 40.1% clip in 2013. Third and four. Hempel out to the left, keeping it himself, and he got knocked down, stumbles forward. We'll have the first down. The option play and Hempel decided to keep it. Made the right decision to the three yard line, a gain of five. And Harvard has its third first down already. And take another look, Hempel 
quick head fake left and then you know, the sign of a good quarterback and the leader they're able to absorb a big hit and still continue to pile on the yards this Holy Cross defense though has really buckled down in this area currently second in the FCS opponents have only converted three of seven times they've been in there so far this year so this is a team that can lock it down Harvard though last year in the meeting between these two teams was five for five with five touchdowns first and goal at the three big set here up the middle, Caston is in, touchdown, Harvard. Andrew Caston getting the start in place of Paul Stanton Jr. Runs it in from three yards out, and Harvard converts on a 47-yard drive to begin the 2014 season. Yeah, and there was just no way that the defense was stopping him here. Quite ahead of steam, and he just bowled right over some white shirts into that end zone. Caston ran for one touchdown a year ago. For the point after attempt, it's Ben Falloon. And he puts it through the uprights, and Harvard takes a 7-0 lead just over four minutes into the first quarter of play. Harvard 7, a Holy Cross nothing. More to come on ESPN3. Back at Harvard Stadium, quickly 7-0 Harvard. A six-play, 47-yard drive that took just two minutes and 12 seconds. And the Crimson on top of the Crusaders as we take a look at the skyline of the city of Boston. A great view from atop Harvard Stadium in Cambridge. Yeah, a bit of a chilly night, but you can tell the excitement's in the air. Football is back. And, you know, the Crimson using a short field, making it look pretty easy on that first offensive drive. Yeah, Holy Cross quickly went three and out, and then Harvard took advantage of just the short field starting at the Holy Cross 47-yard line. Wysorek and Muhammad will be back deep for Holy Cross as Andrew Flesher already his second kickoff. Muhammad all the way back, five yards deep. He'll have to take the touchback, so it'll come out to the 25-yard line for the Crusaders. Probably actually a helpful fumble there. He, it looked like he was thinking about coming out with that one. And with the kickoff coverage, Harvard got the first time. Probably a better result for Holy Cross here. Andrew Caston finishing off that drive with a three-yard touchdown run for the Crimson. As Peter Pouliols and the Holy Cross offense coming back out onto the field. Starting running back Shane Taylor, fullback Michael O'Dwyer, wide receivers Khalif Raymond, Jeremy Murray, and Jake Wyzorek. And then they have... Tackles Blake Beresford, Hunter Hudgens. The guards are Rob Kasherik and Pat Resrepo. And the center is a redshirt senior, Jay Knighton. Pouliols has it batted right back at him. Zach Hodges trying to pick up the ball and play like it was a fumble, but no go on that, of course. You see Hodges getting in there, encouraging his teammates. This defense really fired up right now. The big hands coming up over the middle to block that one. Right now, Harvard's got Holy Cross back on their heels. Puyals really needs to find a way to get this offense driving. Second and ten for the Crusaders. Puyals rushed for a career-high 131 yards last week. Fakes the handoff there, completes the pass to Wyzorek. Slips by one tackler. Got by Ahern, but then pushed out of bounds by a pair of Crimson. Look for them to keep going to Wyzorek. You should see the route to him on the left side. He now just passed 500 receiving yards for his career. The leading receiver for Holy Cross, and he'll be the one that moves the change for them tonight. Third down and four play. Holy Cross is tops in the Patriot League in third down conversions. Almost 52%. Puyol steps up, looking down the field, had an open man, but out through Jeremy Murray. Yeah, and you saw Murray turn back to look over the other shoulder. Just not quite enough to keep up with that ball, otherwise he was gone. So Holy Cross goes three and out for the second consecutive time, although on this possession, they were able to gain seven yards moving forward. Looking down at the Harvard sideline right now, starting quarterback Connor Hempel sitting on the trainer's table and being checked out. 
And that is not a good sign for Harvard less than five minutes into the season. Especially with two key offensive and a fake punt here. Holy Cross will get the first down and more. Taking that down the field for the first down. Number 58, Shane Thompson, the starting linebacker for the Crusaders. You know, I wouldn't be surprised to see more of those plays again. This is Harvard's first game speed action. Holy Cross has had a few weeks of this. You can try to pull some tricks off of your sleeve there. So the Crusaders pick up their first first down of the game on a fake punt. It'll be first to 10 at the 41. Blaycock down to three. And Puyals will run it right up the middle. Get hit by a couple of Crimson at the 45 yard line. Pick up about four yards. And Connor Sheehan and Eric Meads in on the tackle. We've talked about the danger of Puyals on the ground. Also not afraid to take a hit. Takes a big stick here. Six foot two, 196 pounds, a sophomore from Glenview, Illinois. Second and five. And up the middle on the handoff. Taken by Gabe Guild. We were told we should see some of tonight. Has not played since the opener against Albany. He was really good in the opener too. Led the team with 75 rushing yards. Caught four passes for 33 yards. So when he gets going, he can be a weapon. One yard shy of the first down marker. Ball spotted at midfield. Third down and one. Khalif Raymond taking the ball on the handoff and a second effort. Looks like he got to the first down marker. Yeah, let's take another look at this one. You're right, Scott, it's that second effort. Raymond, not the biggest guy in the field at all. Just 5'9", 160, really needs to fight for every inch he can get there. So a first down for Holy Cross at the Harvard 49. The Crusaders now stabilize things. Puyol sli slings it out to Zorik. And able to get back to the line of scrimmage, Norman Hayes. There with the shoestring tackle. Mentioned in the outside of this game, Hayes really the captain, obviously the captain of the team and really the leader on this defensive end that has a lot of young pieces in place now. Hayes, the 141st captain in Harvard football history. Senior from Tucker, Georgia. Second and 10 now for Holy Cross. Puyals, quick step back and completes it off to the right side to Jeremy Murray. Gets out near the first down marker again. It'll depend on the spot. They give it to him. So the Crusaders now marching down the field. Harvard fortunate, maybe they didn't get a flag there. Tackle up a little bit high. You saw Murray readjusting his pads. Holy Cross quickly back over the ball. Guild takes the handoff and brought down almost instantly by Matt Corrin. Able to get a couple yards on the play. Harvard respecting the pass, kind of letting that seam open up in the middle, putting less bodies up on the line. You know, if Guild can just knock out four yards every down, the Crusaders can keep marching. Holy Cross did have 215 yards on the ground last week, but again, 131 of those were Peter Puyol's. Yeah. Second and eight, ball at the 36. And Raymond coming around to make the handoff with Puyol's. Well, Harvard's defense there thought the ball had popped out. Ref's gonna say he was down. So the second time we've seen a play like this, now this time the opposite direction. 
Yeah, it looks like the ball might have been wobbling in his hands a little bit, but a good call by the official. Third down and six. Holy Cross, one of three on third down to begin the game. Pugliaz looks left, now steps up, trying to run. He'll have the first down. And the Crusaders keep things going with a second third down conversion on this drive. Boy, Peter Puyol's only a sophomore, an underclassman, but already has, you can see that impact that he can make those big time decisions and lead his team down the field. Patriot League Rookie of the Year last season. 19 touchdowns thrown, just eight interceptions. Threw for 345 yards in the triple overtime loss against Harvard. Puyols pumps, moves to his left, throws on the run, completes that pass to Jake Wysork. Wysork, the leading receiver for Holy Cross, came in with 14 catches and 278 yards. Has a couple now tonight. And a good job by Wysork. He had ran past the ball, came back, got his knee set, and was able to trap that one in there. First and 10 from the Harvard 17. Hand off to Gabe Guild, up the middle, trying to cut to his right. Brought down across the 15 to the 14 yard line, gain of three. Very long, methodical drive here by Holy Cross, much different than we've seen in the first drive and really the first three plays of this drive. They stay with Gano, Pugliol's kept it. Pushed out just in front of the first down marker by Sean Ahern. So the misdirection there working against both the Harvard defense and the broadcasters. Yeah, they, they faked him out pretty good there. We saw the fake handoff and Pugliol's turns on the Jets. I think they're going to say he's just short. Yeah, they're spotting it just short. Yeah. The first down marker is about the seven yard line. So it's a third and in inches. Yeah. High snap. But the Crusaders able to pick up the first down to the five yard line. Guild again on the run. by Puyol's controlling that high snap and again the middle seems to really be working well for Holy Cross so a first and goal play coming for the Crusaders four wide receivers in this setup Puyals throwing to the corner of the end zone, batted away by Ahern, and then almost there to make the interception was number 59, Matt Corin. Ahern, though, getting up and knocking that one away. Great play by the junior cornerback. And Corin, we didn't expect to get the start today. Would have been a big play for him to come up with there, but active hands again on this defense. We've seen a few times that can create these takeaways. Jacob Lindsay out injured today, so Corin getting the start. Second and goal. Daquan Walker taking the handoff up the middle at the goal line and did not get in. Looks like it'll bring up a third and goal inside the one yard line. Kind of get a wider look at the set there. Walker scored his first career touchdown last week. Was just about, looks like, eight inches away from getting another one there. Killed in the backfield now with Puyols under center. Third and goal play. Guild will take the handoff. And he is in for the Holy Cross touchdown. Crusaders. Come back and answer the 47-yard touchdown drive of Harvard. Needed to use a fake punt in there, but the Crusaders a chance to tie the game up. Let's take another look at this one. Chris Evans, number 23 of Harvard, really thought 
that this ball did not cross the plane. It's close. Harder to tell for us from that angle. His body clearly did not cross it, but if the football is over it, that's all that matters. Zane Wasp on for the point after. And he pushed it right. So it'll stay a Harvard lead, 7-6. to six. As you take a look again at the Holy Cross touchdown, live here from Harvard Stadium. Harvard 7, Holy Cross 6, 226 remaining in the first quarter. Taking a look at the upcoming schedule for Harvard. Crimson will open up Ivy League play next Saturday night. They'll play under the lights down at Brown before playing Georgetown, Cornell, and Lafayette. Holy Cross getting on the board with a 19-play, 75-yard drive that took 8 minutes and 25 seconds. Used a fake punt in there. Gabe Guild running it in from one yard out. But a missed point after by Zane Wasp. And it's only the first quarter, but that could be a big play later on. Yeah, and you know, you were mentioning during the break that's the second week in a row Wasp has missed an extra point. We saw how crazy the game got between these two teams last year. We'll see if that makes a difference. Wasp in there kicking for Connor Fitzgerald, who's normally the place kicker. Bryce Walker on the kickoff return is brought down at the 17-yard line. And that's where Harvard will begin its second possession. Now let's see who comes out as the quarterback because we mentioned Connor Hempel was down on the trainer's table. Looks like it will be a backup here. And going out there is Scott Hosh. So Connor Hempel not on the field. We had Joseph Viviano listed as the backup quarterback, yeah. but Scott Hosh is out there for the Crimson. And on his first play, he hands it off to Andrew Fisher, who gets hit hard. How about a guard or two on the game? Yeah, I would expect Hosh to hand it off here a little bit, kind of get acclimated with the game. He's a junior out of Sugar Hill, Georgia, comes from North Gwinnett High School. Six foot three, two oh five. Probably didn't expect to be seeing a lot of time today. Saw action in two games last year. Gave him two yards on the game. Second and eight at the 18 yard line. Four wide receivers set up for the Crimson. Some trouble with the snap. Now looking at tucking and a run. And Hosh. It's out near the 25-yard line. Will still be a yard shy of the first down, but a good second down gain for Hosh. Yeah, and so far he's showing pretty good grace under fire, able to keep his head on him there and get a few extra yards. Not as quite as speedy as Hempel, but sets up a good third down position. Third and one at the 25-yard line. Pistol formation with Andrew Caston. Caston will take the handoff and be right there at the first down marker. Looked like he got it initially with forward progress and the way the referee is spotting it, that's where it will go. First down, Harvard. I think we could all see what was happening there from a mile away, but Caston able to push through that line. I'd like to see Harvard put together an extended drive, maybe not an eight-minute drive here like Holy Cross, but we saw the tendency of this offense last year to maybe move too quickly. Under a minute to play in the first. And Caston takes the ball out of the shotgun formation. Rushes ahead to the 32-yard line. Gain of five. And looks like a helmet may have come off. So the clock quickly stopped and now restarted as that player goes off. John Sachevsky made the tackle. Leads the Crusaders in tackles with 29 on the year. Second down in five for the Crimson. Hosh back to pass and misses the intended target, Tyler Hamblin. Five seconds to play, so it looks like we'll have one more play of the first quarter. 
And it's third down. And a long four. Hamblin coming across the formation. Handoff goes to Site 2 Smith, lowers his shoulder, trying to fight for the extra yardage. And it looked like he got stacked up before the first down marker. It's going to be close. Well, the spot looks like it'll be a good spot for Harvard, but still might, not, might need to be measured. So that is the final play of the first quarter. Harvard 7 and Holy Cross 6 after playing 15 minutes here at Harvard Stadium. We'll see what comes up on the field next. Harvard and Holy Cross on ESPN3. And they may rule it down. It's Andrew Fisher who made the catch on the pass from Hoche. We'll give it just a five yard gain, four yard gain. And down the field, that's incomplete. So that'll bring up third down now for Harvard, just underway in the second quarter. Crimson scoring on a Three-yard run by Andrew Caston, followed up by a one-yard touchdown run by Gabe Guild for Holy Cross on a 19-play drive. Third down and six. And now a play is whistled down. And Holy Cross calls a timeout before this third down play. Kind of a wild sequence of events. Really, you know, the score is seven to six. We've seen flashes from both teams, but injuries the big story so far, Scott. Harvard seven, Holy Cross six, 14-12 left to play in the second quarter. More to come on ESPN three. Hosh gets taken down. And Harvard will have to punt it away. Kind of a broken play there. No real room for Hosh to, or Hosh, excuse me, to take that one. First punt of the day now for Harvard. David Bicknell back to punt for the Crimson. Khalif Raymond, a dangerous returner, is waiting for the Crusaders. Fair catch being called for and caught at the 20-yard line by Khalif Raymond. So that'll be a 40-yard punt for Bicknell, who was an All-Ivy League second-team performer a year ago. You know, I was talking about it briefly before we took the last break. We've seen flashes from each team offensively, but really the big story so far shaping up today, Scott, the injuries to Harvard's, you know, some of their key offensive players. It's really kind of hampered how this team is moving the ball. Holy Cross ran 22 plays in the first quarter, gaining 74 yards. 19 plays, 75 yard touchdown drive that took almost eight and a half minutes in that first quarter. Puyals with the play action. And complete with the pass to Y. Zorik, out across the 30. Picks up another Holy Cross first down. It'll be their seventh of the ball game. Fourth catch for Jake Y. Zorik. Talked about he'll be the leading guy in terms of getting targets today. Good job cutting back and getting a few extra yards after the catch. Sophomore from Cumming, Georgia. Scored a touchdown last week against Central Connecticut. And a quick screen again. Why Zorik spinning away from the tackle of Ahern to pick up a couple extra yards. And then brought down Dan Moody in on the tackle as well as Dominic Packer for Harvard. 
there you saw, they don't even have to throw a long route to Wysor for him to get those extra yards. His 92.7 all-purpose yards per game, or excuse me, receiving yards per game, leads the Patriot League. He's got a bunch on the ground as well, though. Saw Khalif Raymond with the block as well. Letting Wysor get a couple more yards. Second and five. Puyals will keep it, finds a hole. Down across the 45. First down, Holy Cross. Again, we've seen that fake handoff draw some defenders off the ball in Puyals before. That was Milhouse, ex not Milhouse, excuse me, Daquan Walker, who was part of the fake there. Holy Cross has it going on right now offensively. They're clicking behind Pu Puyals. Gabe Guild in the backfield next to Puyals now in the shotgun snap. Puyals to pass. And down the seam, in and out of the hands of Wise Zorik. Ahern there with the breakup for Harvard. Scott Peters also in the neighborhood. Fortunately, just going the wrong way. That ball was sitting right there for him. Second and 10 now at the Holy Cross 46. Puyals, the quick step back, flushed out, able to get it away, incomplete to Wysorek, a flag in the backfield, could be a holding on Holy Cross. Crusaders, though, not penalized a lot oh. this season. Holy. Offense, number 70, yards from the real line of scrimmage, second down. It is a holding call on Holy Cross, but coming into tonight, the Crusaders less than 35 yards per game in penalties. Yeah, they've been a very disciplined team. I mentioned before, the turnovers are really what's killed them, not necessarily the flags. So the ball spotted at the 36-yard line after the penalty. And it is second and 20. Puyals to pass. Looking right. Norman Hayes turning around, almost have the interception. If he had turned around a split second sooner, I think he corrals that one. But turning around and slightly surprised by it, bounced in and out of his hands. And you could tell the sideline helped him with that one. They said, ball, he turned around. He got a look at it, but just that bang, bang play there, just not quite able to react enough in time. Oh, had his hands on that one too. You know he really would want to have that one back. Hayes had two interceptions a year ago. All Ivy first team performer. Third down in a long 20 now. Shane Taylor in the backfield with Puyols. Puyols flushed out of the pocket, just has to get rid of it. Throws it away. And so now Harvard will force Holy Cross to punt for what we think will be the second time today. Well, Holy yeah. Cross already faked one earlier. Fourth and 20. Probably not advisable, <laughs> but you never know. Good job by Devon Robertson there, getting to the quarterback, forcing Puyals to rush, getting around his assignment, and uh, forcing that hurry there. McGrail with the punt. Bryce Walker back deep, makes the catch, trying to circle back. And they have nowhere to go. Down at the 27-yard line. And that's where Harvard's possession will begin. So the Crimson hold a slim 7-6 lead on Holy Cross with 11-28 left to play in the first half at Harvard Stadium. More to come up next on ESPN3. Harvard 7, Holy Cross 6. Alongside Eric Steckling, I'm Scott Sudikoff. Glad you could join us. We're at Harvard Stadium in Cambridge, Massachusetts. The season opener for Harvard. The fourth game of the year for Holy Cross. 11-28 to play in the second quarter. First down and 10 play. The pass complete to Ben Broniker. Tripped up across the 45. Down to the 47-yard line. A 20-yard gain for the first down. Nice play by Broniker. Kind of pushing some of the smaller pieces in front of him out of the way. Harvard has really missed Cam Braid, or will miss the big play impact of Cam Braid. They'll need plays from someone like Broniker to fill that void. 
Scott Hush, the quarterback still for Harvard, hands it off to Site 2 Smith with a burst of speed. Out across the Holy Cross, 45 to the 44. And you can tell they're still not entirely comfortable with Hosh stepping back and letting it rip. A lot of the play calling's been on the ground. Gain of nine yards for Smith. And it's now second and one. Hosh in the shotgun. Quickly turns to his right, completes it to Fisher. First down, down across the 40. Holy Cross tackle made by Cohen Calabrese. Good pass on target. It's all up to the receiver, Fisher, there to make that happen. First and 10 at the 39. Caston taking the handoff and a flag. Dead ball penalty. False start coming on Harvard. First penalty we've seen on the Crimson. So brought back to the 46 yard line, first and 15. And again, Caston going right. Spins down with the tackle of John Sachetsky. Able to get past the original line of scrimmage. Going back to that last flag, this is a Harvard team that averaged about seven penalties a game. So, so far it's been a relatively clean first half. Second and nine. Posh quickly throws, it's low, and did Broniker pick that one? He did. Broniker makes that catch, somehow, looked like with one hand, picking it off the turf. Take another look at that one. Shoestring might not even accurately describe that one, slowing it down, good job by our replay crew there. And he did get a hand under the ball. He able to cup his hand underneath the point of the ball and shuffle it into his other hand. Still a third down, and five. Quickly, complete to Bryce Walker, first down, Harvard. Crimson starting to diversify the options on offense. We saw a lot of Fisher before. Starting to give Holy Cross some more things to think about. Yeah, Fisher has been getting the bulk of the targets. That's four catches, Broniker two. And now Walker with his first catch. Play action, Hosh across the middle, that's complete. Across the 10 and down to the six yard line. The play by Anthony Ferkser, running back for Harvard. And the Crimson have a first and goal. Boy, and it's a night when we're really studying the depth chart here because lots of new names, lots of new faces making big plays. Good job by Ferkser breaking that tackle and getting a few more yards. Down at the seven yard line, first and goal. And Hosh will keep it up the middle, across the end zone line, touchdown Harvard. And just unblocked there, Hosh. Shouldn't have had to make that look so easy, but Good job by him coming cold off the bench, coming in here and making an impact. Hosh scampers in from seven yards out. And now Harvard a chance to go up by eight with the point after here. Falloon with the point after, up and good. And Harvard now leads. 14 to six. So Connor Hempel on the bench with an injury for Harvard and Scott Hosh has come in as a backup and put six more points on the board with a touchdown run. 8-11 to go in the first half of play. Harvard 14, Holy Cross six. The Crimson completing an eight play 73 yard drive. 
Seven-yard touchdown run by backup quarterback Scott Hosh. Connor Hempel played the first series for the Crimson, led them down the field, and then we saw him on the trainer's table and not back out on the field since. Yeah, injuries have been an issue for Harvard tonight, but the Crimson persevering. Hosh showing some good poise, leading that drive down the field. And Harvard, you know, after giving up that big drive to Holy Cross, responding with one of their own. Kickoff from Andrew Flesher. Coming down to Aleem Muhammad at the 10-yard line. Outside to the 25 and then slung out of bounds. Taken out of bounds by Asante Gibson. Harvard outgaining Holy Cross so far, 131 to 99. And Holy Cross had 75 of those yards on one drive. It's kind of uncharted territory for the Crusaders as you see this flag fly. That's not gonna help anything. Legal substitution on Holy Cross. So it'll back him up five yards before the first play of the drive. Holy Cross is coached by Tom Gilmore. He's in his 11th year. 58 and 57 record. Crusaders were the 2009 Patriot League champions. The last couple of years, though, have been lean. Three wins a year ago, two, two years ago. Puyals, play action, roll out to his left. Has an open man, complete to Khalif Raymond. And able to pick up 13 yards. Yeah, it looks like it'll be a, probably a short two here. Gilmore very familiar with the Ivy League, played at Penn, and is also an assistant at a couple of Ivy League schools as flags before this play could get going. Gabe Gild was heading down the field and another pre-snap penalty. Yeah, you mentioned Gilmore as part of Penn's Sorry, man, dynamic run in the 80s. Ivy League player of the year in 85, so he's very familiar with the Ivy League. An assistant coach at Penn, Columbia, Dartmouth. Three and seven record though against Harvard as Holy Cross head coach. So after another five-yard penalty, it's second and seven at the 29. Puyals, not much room this time. Down to the 31-yard line. Gains back a couple of yards. It'll bring up a third down and five. Yeah, and you saw the running back guild. You'll see the fake handoff again. They've done that a few times today, but Harvard's defense didn't buy it that time, and guild and basically by himself to the sideline. Holy Cross, four of seven on third down thus far tonight. Need to get to the 36 yard line for a first down here. Puyals has an open man. And they'll have the first down to the 44 yard line. Ball caught by Tyler Artem. Senior making his fifth reception of the season. Nice size crowd on hand tonight. It's getting chilly though. The Holy Cross side is pretty good size as well across the way from us. Of course, about an hour away, Worcester. Puyals looking deep down the left side. One on one coverage, but out through Wyzork. Boy, did he make that look easy. He's got a cannon back there. Talked about Puyals' credentials. Patriot League Rookie of the Year. He set freshman records at Holy Cross for completions, yards, and touchdowns last year. Has thrown four touchdowns this season to just one interception. Second and 10 at the 44. Quick screen to Daquan Walker. Goes around that tackler out across the 50. 
And down to the Harvard 48 will be about a yard or two shy of the first down. Third down and two, up the middle, and a first down, Holy Cross. Shane Taylor picks it up. Again, the Crusaders continuing to be dynamic on third downs today, now five of eight. First and 10 at the Harvard 44. Puyals rolling to his right, being chased. Got the pass away. Another open man, Khalif Raymond. Down to the Harvard 28, gain of 16. Puyals being hurried again, showing some great poise, absorbing the hit and finding Raymond. Holy Raymond's cross. another long drive going here for them. Raymond's second catch of the day. Jake Wysorek leading the Crusaders with five receptions already. Puyals, and that pass may have been tipped, and then there almost to pick it off the ground. For a potential interception was 23, Chris Evans. And it'll bring up second and ten. Important to know on that last completion, too, Peter Puyals, a sophomore, just passed the 3,000 yard career passing mark. So, quite a distinction for him already, not even halfway into his second year. Gabe killed on the hand up up the middle, and then pushed all the way back. Connor Sheehan first in on the tackle. We'll have some forward progress though. 26 yard line, the ball will be spotted. Pick up a two. Third down and eight. Big chance for the Harvard defense here to make a stand and keep them out of the red zone. Puyals looking left. And able to complete it to Wise Zorik. Fired that one in there to about the 15 yard line. They'll mark it at the 16. And the Crusaders continue to march down the field with third down conversions. And we've seen a lot of these routes to the outside, but threading the needle there that time, especially with the pressure coming in from Harvard's Jordan Becerra. Wise Zorik already with six catches tonight. And Holy Cross is. 7 of 10 on third down. Puyals looking to run this time. And a flag comes out late. Puyals helmet off and he's saying that someone ripped it off. You have to think from, be, the, from the timing of it. It'll probably be a 15 yarder. Personal foul. Well, we know what he's First saying. First down. Number, ten, number six will remain in the game. Due to his helmet. So the helmet was ripped off. A face mask penalty. And now Holy Cross, it'll be inside the 10 yard line. Spotted at the nine. Guild in the backfield, takes the handoff. We'll get out towards the five. Guild has now ran seven times. 
for 19 yards. Second and goal from the five. Puyals keeps it on the read option, gains a yard. He pulled that one out of the stomach of Guild the last possible moment. It picks up one yard, so now third and third and goal. Third and goal. Big chance for the Crimson to make a stand here, especially with this clock running down in the first half. Shane Taylor in the backfield next to Pujols. Three wide receivers. On a third and goal from the four. Pujols, pup fakes, throws it to the back of the end zone, incomplete. Hayes on the coverage along with Connor Sheehan. They just got that playoff in time too. Good job by the Harvard defense holding. Take another look at this one. He was just trying to throw this one in there. Too tight, double coverage. Not able to hit the receiver. This will be the first field goal attempt for Holy Cross since week one against Albany. Wasp is the kicker. Backup quarterback Ryan Lachlan, the holder. Right down the middle. 21 yards out. And the kick is good for Zane Wasp. So Holy Cross does get points out of the possession. But Harvard able to stop them inside the five yard line. And the Crimson now maintain a five point lead with under two minutes to play in the first half. As the Harvard band getting set to come out onto the field in a couple of minutes for the Halftime performance. So far so good for the Crimson up 14 to nine, but started the game without Paul Stanton, Ricky Zorn, and then losing Connor Hempel in the first drive of the game. We didn't see anything because he finished out the drive and then did not come back out for the second drive of the game for the Crimson. Scott Hosh has been on for Harvard. Yeah, obviously something plaguing him and you know, if you're Harvard, 10-game season, you want to win every game, you take every game seriously. But even if it's just a little nagging thing, you know, you have to really make sure you're ready for Ivy play next week. So you can see maybe they're being a little precautionary. We haven't gotten a word on him yet, though, and what his status is. Holy Cross, check that Harvard has all three of its timeouts with a minute 50. So plenty of time to move down the field here. Another long drive for Holy Cross. 15 plays, 70 yards over six minutes, but this time just the 21 yard field goal. So the two scoring drives have been a total of 34 plays and 145 yards for Holy Cross as Walker takes it from the five and then gets hit hard, brought down to the 19 yard line. Two flags on the play. With flags on the play with a hit made by Sam Jones for the Crusaders. During the return, block in the back, the 49, receiving team, 10 yards, run. So that will push Harvard back to the 10 yard line. If you're the Crimson here, it's an interesting call for Coach Murphy because you'd like to try and utilize this 145, get some points on the board. You're in a dangerous spot, though, where you don't want to turn the ball over. And keep in mind, you get the ball to start the second half, too. So a chance for two possessions, really. Hosh fakes it to Smith and then throws it out to Smith. Down the sideline using his speed. Knocked out of bounds by Aleem Muhammad, but a long gain on first down for the Crimson out to the 31 yard line, gain of 21. You see Smith just getting the ball, lowering that shoulder and taking it down the sidelines. A 
Initial block by Anthony Fabiano opening up that one as well as Smith. A short gain on the running play. Side two Smith has been mainly a wide receiver, now listed as a running back. He rushed 5.3 yards per carry last season. And now it's Stanton out tonight. We've seen Andrew casting at the bulk of the carries. But now Smith back there. Hosh straight back. Down the seam, up over the head of Broniker and intercepted. That's intercepted by Luke Ford. Luke Ford trying to cut it back and down at the 30 yard line. Second interception of the season for Luke Ford. And now the Crusaders a chance to score before halftime. Yeah, and I talked about it at the beginning of this drive. You want to try and take advantage of the clock, but you don't want to be a little too aggressive. And that one just a little too high for Broniker. See Ford, the big body back there, retreating, able to jump up and grab it. Ford, the free safety for the Crusaders. Sophomore from Illinois. Returns it to the Harvard 29. And now, Holy Cross, a chance to at least put three more points on the board. If not, take the lead with a touchdown. And second week in a row, Ford's really been a star. Had a pick last week against Central Connecticut State along with 11 tackles. Four wide receivers for the Crusaders. Pressure coming from Hodges. Puyol's got it away. It's complete to Tyler Artem. Down to the 24-yard line. Holy Cross with two timeouts. You see that right there under the team name on your screen. 37 seconds to go in the half. Puyols looking towards the end zone over the head of Wysork. Sean Ahern on the coverage. We've seen that most of the night. Ahern on Wysork. Brings up third down and six now for the Crusaders, but third down has been a strong suit so far for Holy Cross tonight. Seven of 11, 64%. It's been strong all year. 52% yep. for the season. Time for Pugliols. Completes it to Artem again. And a first down Holy Cross with 23 seconds remaining in the half. Artem, the senior, only four catches entering play today, has three tonight. Plenty of time here for the Crusaders if they can drop some quick plays. Artem goes in motion. Puyols completes it again to Artem to the five. Down at the one, reaching out. And they say he was down before that ball got reached across the goal line. But a flag behind the play. A holding behind the play on Holy Cross wipes that away. When you talk about big moments in this game, we talked about that missed extra point in the first quarter. This hold here, I mean, you're basically knocking on the door for a touchdown if you're the Crusaders. And if you don't get in the end zone here, these are big points you might be missing out on. Not only does it back them up from the one-yard line, now they're up almost near the 30. This isn't a, a gimme field goal either. And Holy Cross will use a timeout with 12 seconds remaining in the half. And the ball spotted at the 27-yard line. So right now, a 44-yard field goal attempt. If Holy Cross were to try that. Fans, remember you can go on you can go on gocrimson.com. Check out the latest on the social stream and everything else going on. Harvard 14, Holy Cross 9. Take a quick break. Be back with more on ESPN3. 12 seconds remaining in the second quarter. Holy Cross, a play right now from the Harvard 27-yard line. We're going to get closer for a potential field goal opportunity. 
First and 20 officially after the penalty before the Holy Cross timeout. Puyols to his right. Completes it again to Artem. This one will count down to the 19 or 18 yard line. Six seconds to go and the Crusaders use their final timeout. But Tyler Artem has become a weapon for Peter Puyols tonight with four catches. Doubling up his total for the season. Had 25 though last season, his junior year. I have to think the field goal unit's coming on here for the Crusaders. This would be a 35 yarder, but again, Zane Wasp is the backup kicker. And we've seen him miss a point after already today. And one last week, but of course he also did knock through a 21 yard field goal earlier tonight. As Hartford opening up its season tonight will open up the Ivy League at Brown next Saturday under the lights down at Providence before playing another Patriot League team, Georgetown. First ever meeting between Crimson and Hoyas. Holy Cross will line up for the field goal attempt. It'll be 35 yards spotted on the right hash mark. Zane Wasp with Lachlan the holder. Ball down, the kick is up. And through a big 35-yard field goal by Zane Wasp before halftime, set up by the Luke Ford interception return. And the Crusaders have come to within two points with halftime here at Harvard Stadium. The Crimson 14, the Crusaders 12. As we've opened up the 2014 season here at Harvard Stadium. Yeah, half of a lot of storylines marred by injuries. Some great play by Harvard backups to kind of continue the composure down the field, but a lot of things to, to scheme out here in the locker room for both teams. Crimson, a couple of injuries coming into the game. No Paul Stanton, no Ricky Zorn, and Connor Hempel hurt on the first drive of the game tonight. But Harvard the lead at halftime, 14 to 12 over Holy Cross. More to come on ESPN3. I think any time you, you graduate a senior class, especially one as accomplished as this one, a team that won an Ivy League championship, a couple of kids who signed NFL contracts, it's really natural to have a, a talent, experience, and leadership void. It just goes with the territory. And it takes time. It takes time to figure that all out. And I think for this particular rising senior class and this team, it's starting to come into focus, but it's, it's a work in progress, I think, for any team. Well, Norman's doing a tremendous job. I mean, anybody who's named a single captain at Harvard is somebody that has the universal respect of everybody in our program. And uh, that he happens to be uh, an impact player really helps, especially because he's, he's the guy in the second row. Uh, but Norman's done a great job. Uh, as I tell our guys all the time, you know, it takes a, a village to lead a football team. And we need a lot more guys to feel comfortable in that role. And I think we're getting I think we're, we're making progress. And that takes some time because it's not always a natural thing for emerging seniors to do. Um, but guys like Obukwila is doing a great job uh, on the defensive side of the ball. Um, Nick Easton and uh, Mike Mancinelli in the offensive line. Connor Hempel doing a tremendous job football-wise and leadership-wise. And, and Tyler Hamlin is, uh, again, a guy that uh, everybody really has faith in and anybody really respects. You've got guys like Eric Meads, guys like Jake Lindsay, who we think are going to be Again, tremendous football players. Um, offensive line, uh, lost a couple of good guys, but probably the strength of our team in terms of experience, uh, talent, and depth. You know, the guy on defense that everybody's going to really focus on is Zach Hodges. And that's a challenge because uh, he and we know that he's going to get double teamed a good bit. He's going to get a lot of attention in terms of uh, any offensive game plan. But I think Zach's had a tremendous offseason. You know, anytime you have the good fortune to have a uh, uh, starting quarterback coming back, especially coming off the championship year, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's something you're not used to. But I think Connor did a great job in his first year as a starter, and we expect him to take the next step and be one of the top players in our league. Uh, I think there's at least six teams in our league that 
if they stay healthy, have the ability to compete for the Ivy Championship. I think it's a wide open race this year. And then having road games always down the stretch against Princeton and Penn, you know, that southern swing is, is always challenging. And all we're thinking about right now is Holy Cross, but uh, we have plenty of challenges on our schedule because everybody has good athletes, everybody's well coached, and if you don't come to play, you don't minimize mistakes and uh, do everything you can, everybody can beat you. Make sure those hips are down. All right, don't click your heels. Let's go. Hips down. Push them across. As he approaches the ball, you guys run inside. Set. Good, Asante. Good, Jones. You want to try and go inside it. All those guys are going to be blocking down. Expect him to disappear. All right, he's going to chase Asante. He's not going to be there. All right, expect him to go. So the big thing right now is it's a lot of uh, you know small details. Uh, you know things that we've been working on, just trying to get those things corrected. Uh, you know the good the good thing that I love about coaching special teams is that you know I get to work with everybody on the team. Uh, so that part of it is is nice. But trying to get uh, that many guys on the same page is not always the, the the easiest part of the job. Let's go, running around, get ready to play fast. Running around, ready to play fast. Let's go, beautiful Thursday. The little arm contest you guys had. Oh yeah, it was. I thought you did. Event. Prime time. Right. First and foremost, we have two goals in the weight room. All right, the first thing we want to try to do for each and every one of our athletes, no matter what sport that they play, is look to try to minimize their risk of injury. So we're going to assess their sport, and we're going to try to assess, you know, what are some of the common injuries that you're going to see along that sport. Now we want to try to maximize the overall athletic potential. So that's just the background goals that we set. You know, everything we do is all built around those two goals. Flat back. As far as you can to that back once around off. Here we go. There you go. Good. No one made guys miss more in his like semi group than him. Like he ran up and like I don't know how many times he made other guys like like freeze and like just with like little little something. All you guys are trying to jump these gaps. All right? right. This is this is your block off the edge. If you can get it, any of you guys could pop free, but set yourselves up wider. Right. All right. Set yourselves up wider. All right. And then try and jump the snap count and take the inside gap. We we'll break it down into the the six different uh, units individually and and uh, you know for the most part uh, there's a lot of, of crossover uh, in the main core group of guys on special teams so uh, you know they uh, a lot of the guys um, have to wear a lot of different hats and do do a lot of different job descriptions uh, on the different special teams units um, but it's just it's a lot of meeting time uh, you know trying to get those guys uh, you know all on the same page and knowing uh, you know what to do and where to go well, now you guys got to learn to be strong here right punch in both gaps both gaps both gaps stay low keep your pads low fire out low our philosophy is really, really simple here. And we believe everything that we do from a weight training standpoint should be ground-based, three-dimensional, and multi-joint in nature. So the ground-based side of things, simply stated, we want to teach all of our athletes to be more efficient at applying force into the ground. The three-dimensional side of things is a fancy word for saying we're going to use free weights. Right? We don't believe in using machines here. We believe that all sports are played in three dimensions. So therefore, we want to train in three dimensions. And then the multi-joint aspect of things, when you look at every sport, you kind of realize there's nothing more than a coordinated effort of all of my joints moving at one time. So whether I'm running, jumping, cutting, rowing, I have to kind of coordinate my body in such a way that everything's going to kind of move together. Good. Get it out, get it out, get it out. Good. Out of boy. Let's go. Crimson on three. One, two, three. Here we go. We're at halftime at Harvard Stadium with the score, Harvard 14, Holy Cross 12, alongside Eric Steckling. I'm Scott Sudikoff, glad you could join us on ESPN3 this evening. And as we look up and down the stat sheet during halftime right now, a lot of numbers that are close. Holy Cross out gaining Harvard 191 to 173. Passing yards in favor of Holy Cross 125 to 114. As we take a look at some of the first half highlights, Peter Puyol says, been involved, of course, a lot for Holy Cross. You see Connor Hempel. This was the first drive of the game, and that may be where he came up a little injured. It looked to stumble a little bit lame. 
He finished out the series for Harvard. Scott Hosh, though, came in on the second drive of the game. So that's something, obviously, to keep an eye on tonight and in the future for Harvard. Yeah, Hempel before he left, 2 of 3, 33 yards. Hosh has done an okay job, 7 of 10 for 81 yards. Did throw that pick that led to the field goal at the end of the half for Holy Cross. Some numbers that aren't so close that do jump out on the page. Time of possession, nearly uh, two-thirds in favor of Holy Cross. 19 minutes, 29 seconds to 10.31 for Harvard. And as a result, total offensive plays, 46 for the Crusaders, only 26 for the Crimson. So Holy Cross has definitely controlled the pace a little bit more. Both teams great on third downs. Both teams 100% in the red zone, 5-5 five of five combined. But it's just replacing this personnel, really, that could be a challenge for Harvard. You mentioned the time of possession for Holy Cross. They have two drives in this game, totaling 34 plays, 145 yards, and 14 minutes and 46 seconds. One was a touchdown drive, one was a field goal drive. And then able to get the field goal before halftime due to the Luke Ford interception, the only turnover that either team has in this game. So Holy Cross... You can make a case coming in. They've already played three games. They've had three weeks of quote-unquote practice. Harvard is playing its first game of the season, and it shows just a little bit. Yeah, it shows, you know, in terms of kind of getting up to that game speed the first time. I know they had some scrimmages in that. And then, you know, can't say it enough, really, losing the personnel, losing some of those first stringers. Uh, Hempel down, you know, we mentioned at the beginning, Ricky Zorn scratched from today's game. Paul Stanton, also the big one, scratched from today's game, had the game-winning score against this Holy Cross team last year, and he's just a workhorse in the backfield for them. You know, the, some nice pieces have come in and stepped up and done a good job. Andrew Kasten, four rushes for 17 yards. It seems like he's been a lot more active than that. Um, Saitu Smith also, or Saitu Smith, excuse me, is coming to do a good job. Andrew Fisher, four catches for 42 yards, but it's it's making sure that Holy Cross doesn't run out the clock on Harvard in the second half. So Holy Cross has spread it around more than maybe they have the last couple of games in terms of, in terms of passing and running the ball. And you have Puyols who can really do it all with uh, the passing and with his own legs, but hasn't had to do that as much here tonight. As you see one of Puyols' final passes of that first half to Jake Weizorg, who has a team high six catches. 14-12, Harvard at halftime. Second half coming up next. Second half about to begin at Harvard Stadium. 14-12, Harvard on top of Holy Cross. The Crusaders, a field goal just before halftime to pull within two points off of the interception thrown by Scott Hosh, Crimson backup quarterback, Connor Hempel just joining us out after one series. Harvard will get the ball to start the second half. Zane Wasp getting set to kick it off for the Crusaders. Bryce Walker and Andrew Fisher back deep for Harvard. Second half underway. That kick bouncing towards the sideline and goes out of bounds. Nice job by Andrew Fisher to realize that and now Harvard will have very good field position to begin the second half. Yeah, he saw the spin it was taking and that it was going to lead it out of bounds. These Harvard kids known for their smarts <laughs> at times. So the ball will be spotted at the 35-yard line as Scott Hosh comes out. 7 of 10 in the first half, did throw the interception at the end of the half, 81 yards thrown through the air for him, 114 yards total through the air as Connor Hempel was 2 of 3 for 33 yards. Andrew Kasten beginning as the running back on this try for Harvard. And some movement up front. Mike Galantini went across the line of scrimmage defensively, but was he drawn off? He was. Original line of scrimmage, first down. That'll bracket up to the 30-yard line, first at 15. Fourth penalty for the Crimson, each side with four penalties now. Holy Cross outgained Harvard 191 to 173 in the first half and ran 20 more plays. 46 first half plays for Holy Cross. Four wide receivers on the first and 15 play for Harvard. Hand off to Kasten. Only able to get one yard. Is in there right off the bat. 
to make the tackle was number 54, Dean Doe, for the Crusaders. Sophomore from Burke, Virginia. Leading tackler in the first half for Holy Cross was Sam Jones with four. Gain of one to the 31, second and 14. Hosh rolling to his left, flips it to Fisher. Fisher brought down by Diego Quintanar. Near the 40-yard line, they'll mark it at the 40. Picking up nine yards, and it'll be a third down and five play. Crimson quickly back up to the line of scrimmage, ready to go. Hosh throws, and incomplete. Intended for Broniker. Looked to be just behind him, Aleem Muhammad on the coverage for Holy Cross. Yeah, it looked like they caught Holy Cross a little off guard with the quick reset. They also caught Broniker a little bit off guard, not quite to his spot yet. So the Crimson, after starting at the 35-yard line, had a penalty back him up five yards, not able to take advantage of the good field position. David Bicknell on to punt for just the second time tonight. Khalif Raymond back deep, averaging 16 and a half yards per return on the season. And a short kick does take a bit of a Harvard bounce to the 29 yard line and that's where it'll be picked up. So Holy Cross will have the ball for the first time coming up from their own 29 yard line. Harvard 14, Holy Cross 12. Be sure to follow Harvard and the entire Ivy League on the Ivy League Digital Network this year. It's the upcoming schedule for Harvard Athletics. As a first down and 10 play for Holy Cross, first play of the second half, Puyols tucking it and running. Gets down to about the 33 yard line, four yards on the carry for Puyols, who in the first half was able to run for 23 yards through for 125, 14 of 24. Yeah, coming off of day two where he, last week where he ran for 131, threw for 156, so living up to his dual threat height. Second and six now at the 33. Fakes the handoff. Brings it back to the near side by Zorik, a good catch, and then brought down by Ahern, but a good route by Y Zorik as he put on the brakes against Ahern, took a quick turn back to the sideline and able to get himself open. Credit Ahern for staying with the play, even though he fell down to kind of get that shoestring tackle. Otherwise, that could have been a much bigger game. Seven catches now for Y Zorik. First to 10 at the Harvard 48 after the big game. Again to Y Zorik. Out of bounds at the 42. Gain of six. A lot of Holy Cross receivers have been fa fairly open for the majority of this game. They're getting good separation from the Harvard secondary, and Puyols is finding him quickly, no hesitation. Second and four. Walker, the running back, takes the handoff. Out across the 40, he'll be just shy of the first down marker, about half a yard. Talk about play selection, too. 46 plays for the Crusaders in the first half. 24 passes, 22 rushing attempts. So they have been pretty balanced, been able to keep this Harvard defense guessing as to what they're going to do next. It's a Holy Cross team that's used to playing close games. 12 of its last 19 losses have been by 7 points or less. So just a 3-9 and nine season a year ago have begun this year 2-1. and one. Puyals. And a quick turn and fire to Khalif Raymond. They did give a first down on that last run, so that was a first down play to Raymond. Holy Cross beat Central Connecticut by 13 points last week. A three-point victory over Morgan State in week two, 29-26. 
again, the quick hitter to Raymond. Trying to get the first down with his legs and second, maybe third effort. Gets one yard shy of the marker. So back-to-back -back catches for Khalif Raymond. And he's up to four on the day. But those amount to running plays for the most part. Yeah, those short routes. Here's another. Looks like it might be a keeper here. I don't know if they got this. Puyol's trying to get it himself on the third down. Doesn't look like it from the spot. And it's spotted short. That's a long one, really. It's about inches. Fourth and inches for Holy Cross. Just shy of the 29, and they're going for it. No hesitation. They were five for six on fourth down entering the game today. One for one. Went for it with a fake punt. Hand off Shane Taylor. Out across that first down marker. And Holy Cross keeps the chains moving. Crusaders now seven of eight on fourth downs this season. They continue to be very good in the crucial downs. Shane Taylor picking up the first down. Taylor had the game-winning touchdown running against Morgan State from two yards out with just two seconds to go in that game. Tom Gilmore elected to go for the win instead of the tie. It worked out. Puyals being chased by Hodges. And Puyals gets rid of it. As Hodges one sack away from tying the Harvard career record. Right now at 19 and a half sacks this season, uh, this year. <laughs> Excuse me. Season and He has won this year. <laughs> 19 and a half for his career, he tried to say. Yeah. And you know, we were talking about him a lot early in that first sequence, very active, getting that sack, getting his hands in on the play, but they've done a good job neutralizing his impact. Second to end for Puyals and Holy Cross. Down the seam for Artem, makes the catch with a Crimson player draped all over him. That was Jordan Becerra and Artem down to the five. Fifth catch of the night for Tyler Artem. First and goal, Holy Cross knocking on the door, trying to take its first lead of the night. And Gabe Guild will give it to Holy Cross. Touchdown, Crusaders. It's now 18-14. And Gabe Guild talked about the impact he had in the opener at Albany. Just finds the hole and runs it right up the middle there. Good answer by Holy Cross after Harvard went three and out. Exactly what you want if you're Holy Cross. Get that three and out and take quick advantage of it now. Looking as if they will try the two-point conversion. And this is where missing that first extra point makes things a little bit messy for Holy Cross. Artem going in motion across the formation. Pouyals will roll that way. Now look back to his left, throws it up, and almost a one-handed catch. Knocked away by Ahern, intended for Jeremy Murray. Murray had that if Ahern wasn't there. Great play by him defensively. So Harvard stops the two-point conversion. Holy Cross takes the lead, though. 18-14, 9.46 to play, second half. Another long drive for Holy Cross. This one, 11 plays, 71 yards. And a Gabe Guild five-yard touchdown run has given the Crusaders an 18-14 lead. A failed two-point conversion. Also missed a point after tonight. Nonetheless, though, Holy Cross on top. Andrew Fisher fumbling the kickoff, able to pick it up. Now finding some space to the 30. And brought down just shy of the 35-yard line. Making a big tackle for Holy Cross. It was 29, Diego Quintanar. Yeah, that was after Fisher found a hole there and was able, good recovery after fumbling that kickoff. And then if Quintanar wasn't there, he probably had another 10 yards easy. Mark him down at the 36-yard line. First to 10, Harvard. And Connor Hempel is back out there. 
as the Harvard quarterback. His first time on the field since the first drive of the game, and Hempel incomplete. Missing Ben Broniker. Takes a shot right away. You can't like that if you're the Harvard coaching staff. That's an encouraging sign that he's back out there. Hempel played the first drive, was two of three, and led the Crimson down the field for a touchdown. The play before the touchdown, he got bumped and came up a bit lame, it looked like. I wasn't sure if it was left or right leg, if that's even the injury causing the concern. Second and ten now. And the handoff goes to Caston with a burst of speed across midfield. Brought down by two Crusaders at the 45-yard line. Andrew Caston just willing the extra yards on this one. Good job protecting the football, too. Ball spotted at the Holy Cross, 44. Hempel to pass, pressure coming, spinning away from it. Able to find an open man on the far sideline. Ryan Halverson stretches out beyond the 30-yard line. First down, Harvard. There you see the composure of Hempel able to scramble back, switch up sides of the field, find the wide open receiver. You know, if you your line gives you enough time, eventually that coverage separates. Down to the 29-yard line. Hempel, the quick screen to Fisher. Block set up. And Fisher able to make his way to the 23, picking up six yards. Second down and four upcoming. Line up with four wide receivers now to the Crimson into the pistol. And Caston spinning across the 20, down at the 20, and it'll be one yard shy of the first down, so a third and one upcoming. Galantini, junior defensive tackle, the stop for the Crusaders. Harvard on third down tonight, four for six. Caston now up to 42 yards carrying tonight. Going shotgun on this third and one. And Caston lowers the shoulders. And his head out to the 15, 16 yard line. Plenty for the first down, of course. So the Crimson trying to answer the Holy Cross touchdown. First down's now 18, 13 in favor of the Crusaders. Must be something about playing under the lights for Caston because he had his biggest statistical game of the year last year in the home opener against Brown. Complete sight to Smith, stumbling down at the six yard line. Mark of one yard further back. Second down and two. Crimson looking for the quick answer. Smith will take the handoff. Dives across the five to the four. We'll pick up the first down, so goal to go for Harvard after the carry by Saitu Smith. Mentioned Smith. Spent most of last season as a wide receiver, now in a running back role. Versatile player. Yeah, and that's one of the depths Coach Murphy talked about with his unit this year. They lost a lot of key players to graduation, but they just have so much depth and so many weapons at different positions. Smith had 141 all-purpose yards in the game against Princeton last year. Andrew Fisher on the end around handoff. Down at the one-yard line. Oh, and he wanted that one. Look at him after it just devastated that he couldn't cross that goal line. He had to go a long way horizontally there, too. 
Second and goal at the one. Harvard trying to retake the lead that Holy Cross just took a few minutes ago. Crimson pack it in with Caston in the backfield. Hempel to his left. Looked to be an option play and nothing doing. Brought down at the five yard line by Ryan Smith. And you wonder, again, we don't know what's wrong with Hempel. Caught in a bad spot there, but you have to figure he's less than 100% too. Harder to get out of those situations. So he loses four yards, third and goal from the five. Does open up a playbook a little bit more, though, from the five-yard line. You can tell, too, there on your screen, he's walking a little gingerly. Definitely not 100% right now. Lining up in the pistol with Caston. Fake it to Caston, throw it to the end zone, and in for the touchdown for Harvard is Anthony Ferkser. And the Crimson retake the lead. Good job by Ferkser securing the football, falling into the end zone, anticipating the hit there. And Harvard, interesting to see how these two offenses have operated. Holy Cross just taking chunks down the field, very methodically driving. Harvard punches it right back at him. Second catch of the night for Ferkser. This one for a five-yard touchdown. And a misplay on the point after attempt. I don't think that was intended there. And Harvard will leave a point up on the board. So Harvard scores the touchdown to answer back Holy Cross, and they regain a two-point lead with 4.43 left to go in the third quarter. It's Harvard 20, Holy Cross 18. More coming up on ESPN3 live from Harvard Stadium. The two teams have traded touchdowns and missed point afters here in the third quarter. Holy Cross failed on the two-point conversion. Harvard uh, misplay on the snap on the point after. Viviano holding and just looked as if he maybe didn't get the ball down for Falloon on the point after attempt. And so Harvard regains a two-point lead. Crimson led 14-12 at halftime. Able to answer back with an 11-play, 64-yard drive, 4 minutes, 55 seconds. Anthony Ferkser catching a 5-yard touchdown pass from Connor Hempel, who was back into the game on that last drive. And important to note, first career touchdown for Ferkser, so congrats to him. Wyzorek from the 6-yard line. Runs into a mess of bodies at about the 25 and nowhere else to go. So now let's see what Holy Cross can do after Harvard came right back and scored. And now that loomed extra point or botched conversion, whatever you're going to call that play, looms large as well with just a two-point advantage here. Peter Pouliols, 19 of 30 tonight for Holy Cross, passing 181 yards. He's completed it eight times to Jake Wyzork. See Zach Hodges. One sack earlier today. One more sack for the Crimson all-time record to tie it with Chris Smith. Hodges, the Ivy League Defensive Player of the Year last season, had six and a half sacks. First and ten at the 25-yard line. Pouliols looking left. Pressure coming from the backside. It's knocked away. It's a fumble, and it's picked up by Matt Corin. We talked about it. Corin has been strong on the defensive end, broke up a would-be two-point conversion earlier, and takes advantage of the opportunity here. Holy Cross has had trouble hanging on to the football all season, and it might burn them again here. First turnover forced by Harvard in the game. Holy Cross lost two fumbles last week, and now this one, Pujols, couldn't hang on to it, knocking it away from behind, 97, James Duberg. Junior from California, and then Corin picking it up for the fumble recovery. And even more daunting for the Crusaders, that's their seventh fumble here in just the fourth game of the season, so obviously an issue. 
inside the 20-yard line. Hand off to Caston to the 10, cuts it across the 5, reaches for the end zone, touchdown Harvard. Andrew Caston putting together quite a day now, goes over 50 yards with that carry. And boy, talk about how much of a difference a minute makes here for Harvard. Take advantage of the fumble on one play, 18-yard rush. Andrew Caston scores it for the second time tonight. Teams are going to have a lot to prepare for with this Harvard team now. Not only do you have to worry about Stanton, but watch out for Andrew Caston really proving himself as the number two tonight. No trouble on this point after for Viviano the holder and Falloon the kicker. And the Crimson now take a 27-18 lead with 4-19 left to play in the third. Andrew Caston, his second touchdown run of the game, has the Crimson on top by nine. Harvard 27, Holy Cross 18. Scott Sudikoff and Eric Steckling with you at Harvard Stadium. Glad you could join us. Andrew Caston, nine rushing attempts tonight for 64 yards. A couple of touchdowns. Just ran 18 yards for the touchdown score right after one play after the forced fumble by James Duberg, recovered by Matt Korn. Peter Puyall's fumbling. And now Harvard has... Put up a nine point advantage after being up by two at halftime, 14 to 12. Crimson have been a great second half team under head coach Tim Murphy. 73 and three when leading at the half. So this is a team that knows how to close it out. And also, we haven't mentioned this before, seven and zero all time at home at night. Yeah, Harvard just started playing night games here in 2007 and undefeated, Aleem Muhammad We'll get out across the 20-yard line to the 21. As Eric mentioned, Harvard 7-0 in night games. Crimson have won 13 straight home openers and 11 of 13 season openers, so a lot of success. And 26 in the last 33 non-Ivy League games. So we did have a flag all the way back, I believe an offside on Harvard on the kick. And Holy Cross is electing to have them re-kick it, which is a smart thing to do. You make the kick return sure. coverage run down the field for a second time and see if you can break one big. I think we missed it because the official threw it right exactly on the, 35 yard line. On the yard line. <laughs> Good placement. Adding another stat to what you were talking about, Scott, of the 140 years that Harvard has played football, they've won their opening game 115 times. That's 82% of the time. So it's a team that knows how to get off to a good start. This is an all-time series that Harvard has, for the most part, dominated. Tonight's the 68th meeting. 41 wins for Harvard, 24 losses, and two ties. These two oh. teams have played every year since 1980. So it's been fairly close to the last seven. Yeah. Harvard's won four, Holy Cross three. And last year, triple overtime, 41-35 out in Worcester. I still wouldn't roll that out here tonight based on the, the crazy nature we've seen this game take. So Flesher will kick off from the 30-yard line this time. And it's coming down towards Ali Muhammad at the nine-yard line. Going straight up. Not deviating his direction, gets down across the 30 to the 32. So it is a, about a plus 10, plus yeah. 11 after the penalty. You're right, that's why you make him re-kick. Everyone's a little more gassed after running down the field time before that. Now it'll be important to see how Holy Cross responds. You know, you had Puyals who was playing so confidently throughout this whole game, engineering two or three very long drives, you mentioned, of six minutes or more. Then he lets go of the ball. Now, what kind of confidence does he have going back out there under center? He'll hand it off. Gabe Guild reaches the 36-yard line. Two or three yards on the carry. Guild has run for about 27 yards now after that rush. Nine carries. The 
give him three officially. Second and seven. And Guild again right up the middle. Down past the 40 to the 41. Four more yards and will be a little more than two yards shy of the first down. Holy Cross still at a 62% clip converting third down tonight. Third and two at the 41. Moving to his left against the grain. Does complete the pass to the 46. Ball comes out after contact on the ground. The ground causing the fumble. Why Zorik making the reception. Ninth catch for Jake Wyzorek in a first down. He's clearly been the go-to option for Holy Cross. Getting the lion's share of the targets today. Guild. Meeting up on a stack and the ball ripped out. And it looks like Harvard recovered it. Unless they were blowing it dead beforehand. No, they're not. They're calling it a fumble. And picking up the recovery this time is Eric Meads. Back-to-back -back fumbles, back-to-back -back possessions for Holy Cross. And that was just Harvard extending the play, keeping the pile going. Able to let Meads get in there and get the football. I think he was the one. He fell on it initially. It looked like number 50 might have gotten a hand on it. Just really a team effort by the defense there. It might have been Sheehan that really helped force it out. Things go from bad to worse there for the Crusaders. This has been a third quarter to forget for them. After they took the lead. Eighteen to fourteen. Harvard scored a touchdown to come right back, then took advantage of a fumble. And now another fumble. Delay a game on Harvard. You know, turnovers like that, you know, both units have to run out under the field. All of a sudden, not really expecting the natural flow of the game there. You can get penalties like that. Holy Cross has now lost six fumbles for the game. Excuse me, for the season. Two for the game. Hempel back to pass. And he finds the open man. Ferkser. Down across the 30. And a big gain on first down after the penalty. And I don't know if there was a white shirt within 15 yards of Ferkser when he caught that ball. Just plenty of running room down the left side. He turns on the motor and turns into a big gain for the Crimson. Had the touchdown catch earlier this quarter. First and 10 from the 27. Kasten. Running to the short side left and able to get two yards. Casting up to 66 yards on the night. 6.6 .6 yards per carry. Not a bad night. Couple of touchdowns. That's the biggest thing, too, just finishing in the red zone. Being able to show that you can, you know, deliver the hammer like Stanton does so consistently for Harvard. They clearly have shown that they have two very potent backs here tonight. Alverson and Fisher switching spots there. And now Hempel slings it to Fisher across the 20. Past the 10. Stays on his feet down the sideline. Flag. And they wave it down. Said he stepped out earlier and a flag back in the backfield. And a holding on Harvard. Yeah, unfortunately, back at the 26 there for the Crimson. Going to negate pretty much all of that play. Todd Fisher. Had the tightrope down the sideline for a touchdown. He said he stepped out before anyways. Then also the flag. 
Hard to tell from that angle if he stepped out of bounds. I guess it's a moot point either way. So the ball goes all the way back to the 35-yard line. Where it'll be second down in 18. Hempel, a complete pass across the middle. Broniker. Inside the 15. And even after the penalty, Harvard able to pick up another first down. Third catch for Broniker. He's made big plays tonight. Had a few that have just been out stretched past his hands, but averaging about 12 yards a catch. First and 10 for the 14. Kasten. Looking to get another one, down to the three. Already has two touchdown runs for the night. Three yards away from number three. And at this point, Holy Cross knows what's coming and they just can't stop it. Kasten playing with such momentum right now. Reset the play clock here. Third quarter clock is at eight seconds, so I think they're just going to let it run out and head into the fourth quarter. That's what will happen. So Harvard outscores Holy Cross 13 to six in the third quarter, helped out by a pair of fumbles, trying to take advantage of this second one. The Crimson in the season opener have a nine-point lead on Holy Cross. One more quarter to play live from Harvard Stadium on ESPN3. Fourth quarter about to start and Harvard in prime scoring position. Have a first and goal from the three. Partly set up by this pass from Connor Hempel to Anthony Ferkser who has a touchdown catch today, the first of his career. Crimson about to line up at the three-yard line, first and goal. Crusaders actually have more first downs than Harvard. But Harvard, the nine-point lead currently. Pistol formation. Caston takes the handoff across the goal line and in for the touchdown, a trifecta for Andrew Caston. Three touchdowns tonight. And Harvard up now 33 to 18. Late flag coming in there. A career night for Kasten, who came into today having played just seven games in his career with 151 yards and one touchdown in three years at Harvard. And all of a sudden he triples that output tonight. I think this is going to be a flag after the score here. The official going over to the Holy Cross sideline. Probably asking if they want it to be assessed on the point after or the kickoff that's usually we have a touchdown after the play taunting number two 15 yards will be assessed on the next kickoff so now holy cross or excuse me harvard when they kick off after this will have to kick it from its 20. so faloon looking to make it a 16 point harvard lead with the point after It's through, Harvard 34, Holy Cross 18. But Andrew Caston, 11 carries, 69 yards, and this third touchdown of the evening has put Harvard up by 16 points just underway in the fourth quarter. Harvard has put 20 points on the board in the second half so far and still 14.55 remaining. 34-18, Harvard on top. Scott Sudikoff and Eric Steckling with you from Harvard Stadium. Glad you could join us on ESPN3. Crimson getting a third touchdown run from Andrew Kasten. And the Crimson with the lead, even though Holy Cross has dominated possession. 25 minutes to 19. This kickoff coming from the 20 due to the personal foul on the touchdown or after the touchdown. And the kick goes out of bounds. Although a kick out of bounds spots it at the 35 yard line. A 
At least it did they earlier. Harvard. Ball be placed at the 50 yard line. First down. Because of the 15 yard penalty, it's now 15 yards further up. That makes perfect sense. And so it didn't really work out, maybe, if Harvard actually planned to do that. Yeah. Ball will be at midfield. Although so it's probably a rule where the coaching staff knows. So the Crimson with 34 on the board. They scored at least 30 points in 9 of 10 games last year. All time when Harvard has scored at least 30 points, they've won 97% of their games. 295 wins out of 302 games. Just ridiculous. It's a magic number, really, for them. Pouliols, complete pass to Y Zork. Tenth reception of the night for Y Zork. First Holy Cross receiver to have 10 catches since Mike Fess last year against Harvard had 11. He's gone on after graduation. Why Zorik now trying to pass that total. Second and seven after the three yard gain. Fakes the handoff to Walker. Looking down the left side. Comes up short. That'll be third down, intended for 87 there. You had to hold your breath a little bit if you're Holy Cross on the sidelines because Puyall took a little bit of a hit on the arm letting go of that ball. Not enough to warrant a penalty, but you always have to cringe a little bit when that happens. Third and seven. Three-man front for the Crimson. Puyals and... Misses his intended receiver, Jeremy Murray, right through his hands. A little high, though. And Holy Cross will have to punt. Bryce Walker standing back at the 15-yard line. As Will McGrail ready to punt for Holy Cross. Fair catch called for and made at the 12. <laughs> 36 yard punt by Will McGrail. And Harvard has scored on three consecutive possessions, helped out by back to back fumbles by Holy Cross for the second pair of touchdowns. Yeah, this is going to be probably the longest field the Crimson have had to deal with in a while, but they've got plenty of time to kill, so. Connor Still. Hempel back out on the field again after missing most of this game with an injury suffered in the first drive. Not sure what the injury was, though. Still important to note, too, you have to be careful here. It is a two-possession game if something were to happen. And that's Kasten. All the way down towards the 19-yard line. Pick up a seven. He's up to 87 yards tonight on 13 carries. We'll head out here for a breather. Harvard as a team has 132 yards on the ground. 83 of them, or 87 of them from Caston. Second and three. Being chased, oh, and that oh. goes off the hands oh. of Ryan Smith and into the hands of side two Smith. Oh. Almost an interception for Ryan Smith and potentially could have been six the other way. Yeah, look at that. Just off the fingertips of Smith of Holy Cross. And like I mentioned, it's only a two-score game. Hempel and the Crimson have to play smart here. Maybe trying to do too much back there to avoid the sack. Loss on the play brings it back to the 13-yard line. Third down and nine. Holy Cross needs to stop right now. Get that ball back. Kasten takes the handoff from Hempel and tripped up, but... He got one yard past the first down marker as he was going down. You'd 
expect nothing else. Kasten just been the star of the night for Harvard. Career high in terms of yardage. Before this, it was just 45 yards against Brown was his single game high. Chase Holman was able to trip him up, but not soon enough. First down at the 24. Harvard will s slow things down as expected with a 16-point lead. Whistle and a flag. Delay a game. So Harvard taking too much time. A little lackadaisical. See the disgusted look on Connor Hempel's face as he turned away from the line of scrimmage. First at 15 from the 19. Harvard penalty is a problem. Nine. Something they dealt with last year as well. Nine for 69 yards. Hempel looking both ways. Now trying to run. Able to get rid of it, complete to Ferkser. Short gate. Ferkser though now four catches on the night. Yeah, seeing his first action, he looked pretty good. Pretty reliable receiver for the Crimson. Hempel is 10 of 12 throwing the ball. Scott Hosh was 8 of 12. So the quarterbacks have been efficient. Hosh did throw that one interception back at the end of the second quarter that set up three points for Holy Cross. Kasten takes the hand off a big hole. Gets by that tackler. Heading towards midfield. Cuts it back down the numbers. Now angling for the sideline and brought down at about the 25-yard line. And the man who made the tackle for Holy Cross slow to get up, Dean Doe. But casting a big run on that play. Look at him just dancing around these defenders, cutting it right, cutting it back left. Aiming right for that sideline. What a great run by him. What a night for him. 55 yards for Kasten. Down to the 23-yard line. We'll take a timeout with an injury on the field. Harvard 34, Holy Cross 18. Heck of a day for Andrew Kasten. Just ran for 55 yards to up his total to 152. The first Harvard running back to rush for 150 yards since Trevor Scales a couple of seasons ago against San Diego when he ran for 173. And Kasten already three touchdowns today. Yeah, and of that 152, 135 of that has come here in the second half. So he's really tore it up. First and 10 at the 25 yard line. And Kasten takes it again. Why not? For the 16th time tonight, he carries the football. Able to pick up just two this time. Let's keep on the praise, too. Coming into tonight, he had 151 career yards. So he has gone past his career output here at Harvard in just one night. Another carry for Stanton, excuse me, for Kasten. Thinking of the fact that he is in there for Paul Stanton. <laughs> missing today's game as is Ricky Zorn. But because of plays by players like Kasten, they haven't really missed a beat offensively. By the way, before the timeout, the injury timeout, Dean Doe, he was able to walk off the field. <laughs> Third down and six, just shy of the 20 at the 21 yard line. And Hempel looking to pass. And it's complete. And will they rule it in? Touchdown, Harvard. Ryan Halverson catches his second career touchdown. And Harvard now on top, 40 to 18. 
Crimson just pouring it on. We'll get another look at that one here in a second. It's a good job by Halverson. It was basically destined to head out of bounds at the two to stretch back in and get this one inside the pylon. Everything going Harvard's way right now. After Holy Cross went up 18 to 14, Harvard came right back, scored, and a pair of fumbles back to back. Touchdown drives after those, and now another touchdown drive. Point after is good, and Harvard on top, 41 to 18. So Connor Hempel with his first, make that his second touchdown pass of the day and the season. Harvard up 41 to 18. Harvard pouring it on Holy Cross now, 41 to 18. Being led by running back Andrew Kasten, who's gone for 153 yards on 17 carries, three touchdowns. First Harvard running back with three touchdowns since also Trevor Scales back in 2012. And mentioned Scales is the last Harvard running back to run for at least 150 yards, and now Kasten has done that here tonight. Ali Mohammed from the five yard line for Holy Cross, taking it out to the far left side, down the sideline, and trying to tiptoe along the sideline against Eric Meads. And the Crusaders have come out on offense, and they have struggled offensively here in the second half with a pair of turnovers. Had that 18 14 lead, it was looking good for Holy Cross, but back to back fumbles really have done them in. And you see the spark, too, has happened not only with the turnovers, but with Hempel back in the game. The offense has just been a lot more efficient. Kind of been a smooth ride for Harvard ever since. Holy Cross hoping to finish this one out strong. They open up Patriot League play next week against Fordham. As the pass is complete to Daquan Walker. Gets to the 37-yard line. Gain of four on the play. Norman Hayes in there on the tackle, the Harvard captain. Holy Cross will be back at home next Saturday to play Fordham. Quick screen, and that'll be ruled a forward pass dropped by Khalif Raymond. If not, that was a, could have been a live ball and another fumble potentially. Third and six upcoming for Holy Cross. Crusaders have been good on third down tonight. Harvard, though, amazingly, has been better. Puyall steps up and will run. And able to get the first down by a yard. Seven-yard pickup by Peter Puyall, who has run for 33 yards today after running for 131 last week. And not really a surprise, Harvard last year only averaging, giving up 97 yards on the ground which is sixth best in the nation. Gabe Gill takes this handoff, reaches the 47-yard line. Gill has had a good day being back in the lineup, 12 rushes for 41 yards and two touchdowns. Second and seven at the 47. Clock under eight minutes to go. Puyals steps up away from pressure, able to dump it off to Guild. Falls down on his back at the 50. It'll bring up a third down and four. You get the sense the Crimson are okay with this. If Holy Cross can fit a whole bunch of plays in here and drain some clock, they don't mind giving up a long drive like this. Able to find Khalif Raymond along the sideline, out to the 40-yard line. Holy Cross does move the chains with the, chains with the clock down to 7.13 to play. And now rolling.
Gill takes the handoff out of the shotgun from Puyols. Harvard will open up the Ivy League season next week playing at Brown, then traveling to play Georgetown before being back here at Harvard Stadium October 11th to take on Cornell. Harvard picked to finish second in the Ivy League, just barely behind Princeton. And if you take a look at the schedule, as there's a flag on the play here, it's going to be a tough road for the Crimson because the top four teams picked in the preseason Ivy League polls this year are Princeton, Harvard, Dartmouth, and Penn. Harvard travels to the other three of those top four schools. 31 on the offense, 15 yards from the original line of scrimmage, second down. They have the 15-yarder going against Holy Cross. So that'll back him up. Looking at schedules, too. Holy Cross goes home next week for Fordham, but then spends the entire month of October on the road. It's definitely a, uh, a challenging road ahead for the Crusaders. Two of those four games in October, though, out of Patriot League play and actually in Ivy League play. They'll play at Brown and at Dartmouth. So both of these teams could, you know, get some help keeping an eye on each other. Harvard playing Georgetown team that Holy Cross will want to scout. Crusaders playing Brown and Dartmouth. Ahern at the feet of Puyols, and he makes the sack. Six on six there. Ahern brings down Puyols. Second sack of the night for the Crimson. We've seen a few plays like that from Ahern tonight, just not willing to go down even when he's on the ground. Still lunging out to make the play here. If you're Holy Cross, you never want your quarterback sacked, but you're glad nothing got twisted as he went down there. Now it'll be third down and forever. <laughs> 29 to be exact. Puyols complete to the 38-yard line, but it's going to be about eight yards shy of the first down marker. Why Zorik makes another catch. Number 11 for the Crusader wide receiver. This will be four down territory, though, for the Crusaders. Fourth down and seven. Puyols looks to his right, complete to Khalif Raymond at the marker. Ahern looked to have knocked him out before Raymond could get there. Yep, looks short. And Holy Cross will turn it over on downs with 4.52 remaining in this one. going to wonder right now, maybe you see Scott Hosh go back out there, quarterback for Harvard, and there he goes. So Hempel, hampered by something earlier in the game, now in a 41-18 contest, will sit back on the bench and let Scott Hosh take control of things. Yeah, Hosh did a pretty good job as you take a look at the total yards. After being behind for much of the game, Harvard now almost 100 yards ahead of Holy Cross. But I like this call here by Murphy. No, no reason to, you know, you know Hempel already has been tweaked in some way today. And taking the carry out of the backfield, Blade Brady getting his first touch. Have to believe Andrew Caston's night is done. 17 carries for 153 yards, three touchdowns. Hosh, 8 of 12 throwing the ball for 90 yards, did have the interception right before halftime. And that's definitely something to learn from him. It cost his team three points. But good to see that he's getting some more time here to get more reps in. Second and seven after the three-yard gain by Brady. Brady will take it again. And out across the 40, looks to have picked up a first down for Harvard. Does get it, does Blade Brady. I think that has to go on the all-name team, Blade Brady. Anybody named Blade is actually, sounds like it's a very good running back name too. Able to cut through the defense. Three and a half minutes to play in Harvard with the 23-point lead. And 
and Brady another. Time carrying the ball to the 46. Three yards this time. Crimson co-Ivy League champions last year with Princeton. Remember Princeton came here and snapped that long home winning streak that Harvard had in a heck of a battle. A couple of games last year were fantastic here at Harvard Stadium. Remember the Penn game as well where Penn made a furious comeback at the end, but Harvard held on. Harvard played a lot of interesting games last year. Yeah, it was the first year they'd had two, three overtime games in a season. Oh. And Brady will fumble that one off the handoff from Hosh, and there's the turnover. Second turnover for Harvard, first fumble. Let's see if it was a mix-up on the handoff, and maybe Hosh left his arm in there a little bit too long or didn't place that ball correctly. It seemed to be some sort of mix-up. Second Crimson turnover tonight. You know, you might look at the, the final score of this game if it ends up being 41-18 to 18, or even if Holy Cross gets another score here and think, you know, Harvard had a pretty easy night of it, but it was those turnovers that really led to the turnaround, and here's another one. Interception by the Crimson, number 44, Scott Peters. And then back near the backfield, a Crimson player is down. Down hurt is 81 Scott Evans. Backup defensive lineman. So the interception made by Peters. Holy Cross gives the ball right back with 2.27 left as they work on Scott Evans down on the field for the Crimson. And Evans able to sit up. So the Crimson, 227 away from going 1-0 on the year. Travel to Brown in Georgetown the next two. Yep. Holy Cross about to fall to 2-2, two and, two and they'll be home against Fordham next Saturday to begin Patriot League play. A Fordham team in which they gave up 700 yards of offense last year and only lost the game 32-30. to wow. They'll have Fordham at home next week. Evans able to walk off the field on his own power. Kind of talked about the long-standing rivalry between these two schools. They have played every year since 1980. Next year, they will take a year off in the series, but they have renewed the series for a few years coming up back in 2015, or 2016, excuse me. Makes sense. I mean, both schools relatively close, both usually relatively good programs. A lot of tradition between these two schools, Harvard and Holy Cross, and played Brady back running the ball after the fumble down at the 29-yard line. Tim Murphy in his 21st year coaching the Crimson, about to go to 138 wins and 62 losses as the Harvard head coach. And in fact, the, the number that really stands out over the last 12 years now a record of 105 and 25, the best record in all of the football championship subdivision, formerly known as 1AA. Yeah, it's impressive what he's done with this program. They actually have the number one winning percentage in the FCS in the last 12 years, even ahead of three time champion North Dakota State. They won 80% of their games in the last 12 years. Hosh, after the bad snap, will just slide down, not taking any chances. It'll bring up a third down and long with. 90 seconds left to go on this one. And Murphy has dominated Holy Cross in his time here. Will now be 16 and 4 against the Crusaders. Seen the offense today surpass the average of a year ago, 426 yards per game. It was last year's average and tonight 227 in the air and 198 on the ground. For the Harvard offense, 
Joel Lamb, the offensive coordinator. Former quarterback for the Crimson as Blaine Brady brought down at the 26 yard line on the third and long play. Holy Cross is going to call timeout here. They want the football back. Get a few more extra reps in. Could try a quick one minute fast drive potentially help build for next week's Patriot League opener. You know, fans here didn't like that. You might have heard some of the reaction from down below us. But, you know, every moment is a teaching moment in football, even when you're down by 23 points. And you're right. Maybe practice something that you can use next week against Fordham. Taking a look at Harvard Athletics on the Ivy League Digital Network. You can see the field hockey team, which has begun the season 5-0, and I think for the first time since sometime in the 1970s. They'll play Yale and plenty of action all weekend and up until Wednesday. You can follow the entire Ivy League on the Ivy League Digital Network. Women's volleyball just took down uh, SEC Power Georgia last weekend on their home court. Bicknell with the punt. And it bounces in front of Khalif Raymond, takes a Harvard bounce. It'll be down at the 28-yard line. 46-yard punt for David Bicknell, who averaged just over 40 yards per punt last year. Got him on the All-Ivy League second team. Continuing that trend in one game so far this year. So the Crusaders will work with 36 seconds left and two timeouts and see if they can end this game on a positive note. Peter Pouyals was intercepted his last time on the field. I say, wonder if we see their backup, but it will be Pouyals finishing it. Pouyals with plenty of time. A flag comes out. Back near the line of scrimmage. Pass was caught by Jeremy Murray. Could be an offside on Harvard. Personal foul, face pass, 66. Nope. Oh. Somebody on the Holy Cross offensive line, Nick Piker, grabbed a face mask. So Holy Cross, after taking that lead 18 to 14 in the middle of the third quarter, just went cold. Harvard came back, scored to take the lead back, and then back-to-back -back fumbles, and two more touchdowns by Harvard. Set up by those fumbles. Holy Cross has turned it over three times now tonight. Puyals will keep it, and then fall down at the 19-yard line with just 20 seconds left, and Let's see if the Crusaders elect to just let the time run off and not risk any further play here. That looks to be the case. So the Crimson scored 27 unanswered points after Holy Cross took an 18-14 lead in the third quarter and the Crimson end up coasting to a 41-18 win over the Crusaders tonight to open up the 2014 season at 1-0. And Holy Cross falls to 2-2 two two on the season. Well, Eric, again for Harvard, uh, uh, I guess a slow start. Some injuries that we think at the start of the game. No Paul Stanton, no Ricky Zone. You saw Connor Hempel go out early in the game. But Harvard was able to fight back even when they fell behind. Uh, it's almost like they flipped the switch and took this game into overdrive. And Andrew Kasten really helped carry the team. 17 rushes, 153 yards, big damage in the second half, three scores. Connor Hempel, even though he was hurt, came back to have a pretty nice night. 11 of 13 for 137 yards, two touchdowns. For Holy Cross, it all turned on turnovers like it has for them in that Albany game and other times this season. It's really just taking care of the ball for them. And again, as you mentioned, Eric, a heck of a day for Andrew Kasten. 
the first Harvard running back to run for over 150 yards since Trevor Scales did two years ago. First running back to have three touchdowns since Trevor Scales a couple of seasons ago. So without Paul Stanton out there tonight, Andrew Caston was able to carry the load for the Crimson and help bring them towards this 41-18 victory. So the Crimson begin the season at 1-0. and oh. And Holy Cross falls to 2-2. Two and two. We thank you for watching tonight's presentation of ESPN3 College Football. Harvard beats Holy Cross 41-18. For my broadcast partner, Eric Steckling, I'm Scott Sudikoff. Good night from Harvard.